Welcome to Overwatch and welcome to Cutting the Money with Winston. And we're going to be focusing on Winston, even though today's game starts out on Roadhog. Don't get me wrong, like you guys could probably see in the bottom corner here, this is a 36 minute video. We're really going to just coast through the uh, the Roadhog stuff at the start. I'm probably going to start it playing right now. Let's get a Twitch chat back in. Um, and this is like a really good example that sort of bolts onto the back of yesterday's Coaching the Mini. So yesterday we did Coaching the Mini Roadhog. Uh, if you haven't watched that, go watch it. I'm sure it's pretty useful. Um, but yesterday one of the big questions that was being asked is like, when do you swap off Roadhog? When is Roadhog weak? And we're going to have actually a really good instance here of Roadhog not being able to do too much. So I'm going to get rid of Twitch chat. Bye Twitch chat. And we're going to get rid of the, the scrolling on the screen. There we go. Um... And yeah, we're going to be rolling with the Roadhog. Now, the game is at about 1900 SR, so low, sort of high gold, I think, low platinum. We're approaching the gold silver border, I think. Uh, we are gold, which is nice. So we actually have like a, a semi dive combo. It would actually be nice. Are we AFK? Can we press tab? There we go. So we have a team lineup. Let's have a look at our team lineup here. So. What have we got? What are my thoughts when I see this team lineup? How, how are we going to approach this match? How are we going to do things? Well, the first thing I notice is we have we have this this guy who is called something. Joan Karusu, well, it could be Junkrat in Japanese, I don't know. Um, clearly, happy Junkrat player. At this rating, honestly, I don't really care that there's a Junkrat involved. Uh, I think he could do enough damage. I think people aren't going to be good enough at surviving him, aren't going to be good enough to avoid his damage, aren't going to be good enough to sort of work around him, that he's not going to be, like... He drops off at a higher MMR than this, so I think Junkrat is actually okay. It's not great. Uh, I would love to see something like a Soldier instead. Um, the Anna Diva combo also gives us a slight issue. Like, we're going to have to really be working around the Diva pretty heavily. And we're going to have to be very conscious of what Anna's doing for our positioning to get a lot of work done. The big thing that concerns me is that the enemy team, if they are well coordinated, could just try and like brute force through D.Va's defense matrix, and then they're just going to nail like everyone. They're just going to kill everything. Like you have no barrier tank at the moment. So let's get started with this. See what the enemy team is going to be meeting. We're going to be hoping to get a lucky pick. The one advantage of the Roadhog Junkrat combo is actually that if you land a hook and pull, uh, the Junkrat should have a free and easy kill. Now this is sort of one of the things I'm afraid of, like if they have a good long range threat, then we're going to have a little bit of trouble. Perfectly fine with us going for that. Really don't like what the D.Va did here actually, I'm going to shout, like, um, I would be furious at this D.Va. So what D.Va's done is, we've pushed out here, most of the team has to follow us, right? Because we are, we are land ridden creatures. And because no one's made any voice comms, there's no communication happening, um, you just got to assume that, you know, we're pushing mid. And the Roadhogs run that way, so that's what's happening. Diva flies up and over and basically says, you know, imagine if you had a Reinhardt who just avoided the main fight. Like, that's not sensible. That's not good. That's not a useful thing to do. So Diva's just dodged, you know, all this damage coming in. She could have caught these rockets. She could have caught all this boosted soldier damage. And so she's just jumped straight to the point and hasn't really done anything. On the right side, we have managed to move to the point. We've taken the point over so we can start playing to our advantage. Again, as we talked a lot about yesterday, sticking near the uh, the covered areas. Let's let Reinhardt do that. Ah, oh, a little bit of a misjudgment there. Uh, with Reinhardt charges, you can always just, you know, think about where he's going to end his charge so we can see that he's coming through here. We just know that he's going to end about here uh, and just take your time with it. He can't bring the barrier up for a good second after finishing the charge, so it's very easy to just throw the hook there. There's no need to panic and rush it. A good job getting the finish on him at the least. And then we could just go back and we can probably actually be stood more here uh, towards this area. Just because the only th real things that were over in this area are like Mercy and Anna. That's not really scary to us. And anything that's coming through here, it's going to be running into our close range weapons. And we want to be leveraging that strength. So again, just let's move into where we can really be close range and really cause problems and then work from there. And we can really punish stuff like a D.Va, who's being a bit aggressive. Dump a defense matrix up, we get an easy kill. Or at least we get an easy kill on the mech. And yeah, this is just basically easy, easy times for us. Beautiful right click. Good, 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 good. Okay. We stand back up. Fine with that hook. Perfectly fine with the hook. And then just chilling into the barrier. Let everyone else deal with the tracer. Like, we, we can sort of cause problems with the tracer, but it'd be better if everyone else deals with it. Nice capitalizing on that. Fine with us hunting down the soldier. So this is the thing, this is actually worth mentioning with Hook uh, 2.0, is it will always try and drag. Now I hope 1.0 in this situation would have just like dragged him straight towards us. Uh, you can't see that because it's underneath me, but it would just like drag him towards where I am. It would just pull him towards me physically on your screens right now. Uh, what Hook 2.0 is going to do is it's going to pull him to about here, like 
it's going to be a bit weird and a bit awkward. So you can see it just like, it looked like it dropped him and then like tugged him to the side, so it's always going to be a bit awkward. We do land the shot, but landing the second shot's going to be a bit of a pain. There we go. Really good left clicks. Like, I like the left clicks. A little bit rushed on the hook, again. But it happens. Like, just take your time with it. Reinhardt isn't going to do anything in the second or so that's going to take you to take a look at this. And so you could just... Like, I think what happened here is the hook was going for the Reinhardt, but honestly, you should just be hooking straight at them, because getting either of these two targets... I've just drawn a bomb. Uh, either of these two targets is... all oh, the Quake symbol. Uh, either of these two targets is maximum value. Like, if you hook Reinhardt, great. If you hook Anna, great. Like, it's removing something important from the fight either way, so getting either one, good. Well, you can continue to be annoying. Probably gonna get slapped. No, we're not. And Reinhardt's just charged to his death. He's trickling in like crazy! But we will see things stop going quite so well eventually. I think uh, the first half of, like the first point in this uh, just goes super well for us. But like, the enemy team does not do well. They're starting to change things up now. So they have a Junkrat now, which just means we have to be a little bit more careful when we're poking out. But we have a D.Va who really, really does a good number on Junkrat. Like it's very hard for the Junkrat to spam properly if D.Va can just stand there and catch it all. Good hook, good Q, uh, good hit. Good not using the Q just because we saw the Ana. Like, when you see the Ana run around here, if we press Q, we know we're going to get slept darted. So we can just afford to wait that out. We're perfectly fine just waiting here. They aren't pushing in. When they do, we know that they won't have sleep dark quite ready. Let's punish this. We should be hooking this. Uh, Divas. Divas, 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 Divas. The thing that when you have a Diva in line of sight of you, you should be checking this first and foremost because she cannot defense matrix while being hooked. It is a stun. And so if you just hook her, then the rest of the team will kill her and will remove her. Like, the Diva can then just land free shots on her. She won't be as easily healed. It'll be completely worth doing. They've just fired sleep. Definitely, definitely Q. Good, 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 good. Good target priority. You're getting rid of something important. Good job getting yourself to safety. I like it, I like it, I like it. Bit of a greedy hook there, we could have just put it on the Reinhardt maybe, but... If you got the Anna it would have been worth, maybe. They're using a lot of resources, we did what we could do there as well. Nice save on the D.Va, you could probably finish off the Reinhardt here, good, 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 good. He was purple so he should have been our target priority, we should be turning around at the moment though. And just checking all the threats behind us because they just res, which means the Reinhardt is back in the fight, so we've got to be a little bit careful. Just, again, overthinking the hook. We can afford to just be a little bit calmer with this. We just, we actually, like, flicked ourselves. You know, this is a congratulations you played yourselves moment. Because we do this fancy pants flick. And when I just reverse it far enough, you can see where the crosshair was when we throw the hook. So we just, we just played ourselves. If we just put the crosshair on this corner, then we're probably going to grab the mercy. Feels bad, man. They might be wondering, you know, this is costing them any wins, and why are we focusing so much on Roadhog? It's a good question, it's a fair question, which is why I'm skipping forward a bit, and why I'm talking so fast, because we want to do get through this, but hey, free Roadhog information doesn't hurt anyone. Uh, be very careful when pushing up this general Li Zhang Tarot advice. When they have a Lucio, we want to be super careful. So when you see this, especially with the upcoming Lucio changes, this is going to be like, you know, me, Dominus! You know, it's, it's scary, scary stuff. It's like, terrifying. You have dramatic music should be playing in the background when you see something like this. Um, just because he's going to try and boop you off. The thing that you can do is if you hug this wall super tight, and if he's playing around this corner, then when he pokes out, you just hook him and get a kill, and that'll feel great. Um, but if he's playing around this corner where he should be playing, then you really can't afford to go this way. Otherwise, just shilling into the barrier. Okay, no views us, Shadow. Down we go. Alicia doesn't land the boop. Feels bad, man. He might win the current uh, coming patch, which feels good, man. But they've adapted the holding well. Again, I don't think we're leveraging our strengths if we try and push in that way, just because we can afford to take our time. We can definitely get rid of that Reinhardt barrier nice and quick. We have Junkrat, Roadhog, Diva. These are all very good at dealing with barriers, so the Reinhardt barrier really isn't that big of a problem. Good left click. That should force straight on the back foot. She goes down. They just do a Diva bomb. Gets nothing. Good attempt by the Lucio to boop you back into it. I'm fine with the Q here. Oh no! No, you gotta keep it on him! Good left click though. Just take it easy. Get the next one. Good. Good, 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 good. Good hook. 
Nano Boost Diva. It's a little bit scary for us, actually. We want to be a little bit careful. Um, just because she can kill us pretty quickly. Beautiful hook on the Tracer. Nice save by the Lucio, though. One of the best things you can do as Lucio, if someone on your team gets hooked, is just boop. Because uh, it does displace him. We should be healing. When this stick lands, we should be mashing, mashing the E button. Because we'll survive this if we do that. Barely, but we probably would have survived it. Maybe, maybe not. It would have been tricky, but we might have just lasted. I mean, that's just a great bomb as well. We were already jumping, so we were already sort of committing to that. Uh, otherwise, like, we've taken the point, we just need to secure it. Which it looks like it might be happening. But it's close, it's a close thing. Very nice hook there. Good, we're putting pressure on the D.Va, that's exactly the target we need to be putting pressure on. Unfortunately, their DPS is just doing a better job than ours at the moment. So you need to run out. Could be bad. Okay. Huff, 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 huff. We're not going to do much. Oh, no, 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 no. We want to huff before we turn the corner here. Um, the reason being is simple. They have to cap the point and then overtime has to tick down. That'll actually take them a little while. If you huff here and then go in, Anna's already sort of committing. Like, at what should be happening here, the technically correct thing that should be happening here, is that Anna, like, you have a heal grenade on you. Um, have I just gone crazy and just, like, completely missed where we were? I think I have. Yeah, whatever. The technically correct play there was Anna put a heal grenade on you, then like didn't heal you. And so she should have just topped you off and then you just go in and then you can huff or whole hog or do something with it, but it just didn't end up happening. And then we whole hog, we don't get any value off it because it's just all of their team staring at us. The Reinhardt's getting huge amounts of value. This again is the problem where we don't have a barrier hero. Guess what? We're going to be swapping to Winston at some point soon, um, which will help fix that. And we're fine not being on Winston now. Um, just because their team is actually okay against Winston with the Junkrat, with the uh, D.Va, with the Reinhardt. So Winston wouldn't be a good pick at the moment. I'm fine with the Reinhardt pick. I would just like to see our team have a Reinhardt or just be taking it a bit slower. Like, it just felt like the team was just trickling in, just like running into a close quarters angle repeatedly when you could just take it slowly, wear down the Reinhardt barrier. And suddenly Reinhardt's just not a problem. But right. So, it felt like that game was going badly, and so we decided to swap. We decided to swap onto Winston, everyone's favorite space gorilla. We have a Tracer, we have an Anna, we have a Lucio, we have a Diva. Diva's actually not too bad with dives. She can kind of go with it and kind of cause a lot of problems and trying to kill the Winston. Um, so, yeah. We're also very good at dealing with reliable damage. So one thing I would say is that on Control Center, Winston isn't great. And Winston isn't great on Control Center because... Winston relies on sort of big open spaces, and while the point itself is a big open space, these little corridors are just like death traps for Winston. It's very easy to just get caught in them. If you're standing in one, you just you fill up the entire space and you just take a shitload of damage. You can sort of run away and hide away and tuck away fairly semi-reliably, but you've got to be a little bit careful. And then we also have Mercy for some reason, and we have an Anna. We should be scouting out, we should be coordinating with this Tracer. Now the ideal play is we need to really be on voice comms. Diva's definitely not going to do us any favors here. They have a junk route. You notice how fast that barrier is going down? One thing I noticed uh, immediately when I was watching this for the first time is we are standing in a really stupid position. So let's talk about Winston in terms of like, you know, where is Winston effective? Well, the answer is very simple. It's, it's short range. Winston's good at short range. So why are we put our bubble in a place where we'd be more suited to medium range? Like this bubble, it's protecting our team, but it would protect our team just as well if I go down the blue, if we put it over here. It would serve exactly the same purpose, it would protect exactly the same people, but it means that we could stand over here, and we can cause problems just using this corner. For example, when this bubble inevitably goes down, which it will very quickly, we can just stand in this corner and just harass the shit out of the Reinhardt, and just cause problems for this Reinhardt trying to come around the corner. Instead, all we're kind of doing at the, this point is just standing there. Like, we've just been standing here. We have to jump into a position where we're still kind of now just exposing ourselves. Like, we've just left our ass hanging out for the entire enemy team. So now their team can all see us. And while we can hit people, there's nothing different to us standing here except for the fact that this Reinhardt looks like it's about to charge us. Then if we just stood here, where we would be safe, we could use this wall for a little bit of natural cover. And we could just poke around the corner. That means that if they try and come this way, we just... 
whittle them down. We're doing good damage on their team. If they try and change, then we can see, we can just poke around a little bit, poke our face out and go, oh, what are they doing? Oh, they're all going this way? Okay. Then I can reposition very quickly and sort of come back up here and start causing problems for them if they start pushing down this way. You could easily hang out here, for example, or you could even be fancy and you could jump up here and then lightning gun down. Like, you have tons and tons of options here, but coming over here, it's just basically saying, Hi, I'm, I'm stood here, now I'm sort of stood in the open, and now I'm going to take a shitload of damage, I have to run the fuck away. Now that they've split up, this is a slight issue for us. Uh, wouldn't mind the bubble just being a bit further forward. Remember that the bubble can work like a, a barrier. I mean, our bubbles are not going to last just because they have, like, D.Va and Jack Like, look how fast it goes down. Oh, I really like this jump here. Um, just because, like, their D.Va creates an opening. So their diva's pulled away, and we've seen that they have a support here, they have a support here, and I think this is our tracer as well over here. So I'm absolutely fine with us committing on this, because now we can just start burning down, especially the Mercy, and just keep the constant damage on the Mercy. And you notice how far she goes down. And then we can just keep on things, and just sort of keep problems happening, where we can just use this corner. I definitely think we should be using this corner, and just sort of poking our face around, rather than just jumping out into the open here. There's nothing wrong with just standing um, here and just doing damage to this Anna, and then just poking out a little bit and just harassing here. Because by just jumping out, then we're just saying, you know, hi there to Junkrat, who's going to kill the shit out of us if we're not careful. Like, Junkrat does a lot of damage to Winston, so we've got to be very careful about that. It will be nice when the buffs, in effect, though, and you have a little bit more cooldown off the, the barrier. Just doing some incident incidental damage on D.Va. If we can finish the D.Va off, then great. We over-reloading. Do we need to reload there? Why are we reloading? I think we anticipated that D.Va was dead there and she wasn't quite dead. We don't need to reload here. Cut that habit. I just... It's sort of a... a it's something that you've sort of got to get used to with heroes with large ammo, uh, large ammo pools. And that's the, you know, you don't have to reload. Better to just wait for the kill to be absolutely sure and then just follow up on the damage. Bit of a whiff jump as well. Like, you just gotta remember with Jump, like, um, I know in the email attached to this, it said basically, like, he's not experienced at Winston, hasn't played him much, wants to learn how to play him. Um, so it's like a very, very new player to Winston. One of the things with Winston's Jump that it's honestly, like, a little bit confusing at first is the fact that the Jump has kind of, like, a minimum Jump distance. Whenever you press Shift, you will go a minimum, um, Jump range. So it's like... You've got to be very cognizant of that jump distance, and when you try and do a short hop, go high, because that will actually mean that you have more control over where you're going to land. This is something that is absolutely fucking impeccable to do, um, which is to put a glass dome over the top of Anna. Notice Anna's tried to throw a grenade. Uh, I don't know if, whether that's more on herself or on others. I think it's just more on the Junkrat. Like, she's tried to heal the Junkrat and she's just hit this wall. Putting a bubble, putting a dome on Anna is so fucking good. Um, as long as it's relatively near her, you just cause her a ton of problems because, like, Zenyata can heal through barriers as long as there's Harmony Orbs out there. Lucio, I think, can still heal through barriers. Mercy can put a beam through barriers, she can Guardian Angel out of him, no problem. Anna is completely and utterly diddled by barriers. If you just jump on Anna and just put a bubble on her, all of her healing is now gone. You've just killed the Anna for a couple of seconds until she can position out of it. The one thing you've got to be careful about is that the Anna will try and anti-heal you, try and sleep you. She will try and make you pay for it, but if you are in a fight and you just cut the Anna off, it's A++. The ideal thing to do isn't necessarily to trap her in with you, it's to put the bubble like in front of her and just like cut her off with a barrier that she has to walk through twice. Um, because let's, let's draw it on here. Uh, let's draw it over here. So let's say that this is Anna. Okay, this X represents Anna. If we put the bubble around her like this, okay, there is a distance that she has to walk to get out. Now then, if we... Um, we want to maximize that distance when she's separated from the team. The best way to do that is to put the bubble literally right in front of her. Because then she has to walk through one barrier and then through another to actually start getting healing out there. And it's such an effective thing to do. And what we can also do is because we are in theory landing here, while she's moving forward, we just move back. And that also means that we are safe from uh, any sleep darts, safe from grenades, safe from all that stuff. And all that while, we are just coning out damage onto the Anna. And it just completely fucks the Anna. It's such a good way of dealing with her. The big thing is to make sure you are landing in front of her and then putting the barrier down quickly so that she isn't landing the sleep dart. 
Um, the best thing to do is right before you land, and it has to be very well timed, because if you do it too early, you just drop the barrier somewhere stupid, and you feel like a complete numpty. But right before you land, you put the barrier down. And that means that it's very hard for her to get that shot. You've got to be careful about how high you jump, because a good Anna will catch you on the way in. Um, but it's a very, very powerful thing to do. Just got to be a bit careful about the D.Va. Like, notice that when D.Va has armor, she is super low prio for us. If the D.Va has armor, we are doing tickle damage. We are not doing anything to her. It's really not worth sticking around. Like, she will kill us way before we kill her, and there's no reason to stick around with that. So, once this Anna is sort of dealt with, we should just be looking to get out. Like, we should probably be just staying in the barrier, and then just turning around and leaving at this point, with as much health as possible. Because otherwise we are dropping so low that we now have to press Q, which is kind of okay, we could just pin this Reinhardt. I'm okay with that. Okay, we're gonna knock the Junkrat around. Be a little bit careful if you're knocking the junk, uh, Junkrat around, because you can do a lot of damage on the way out. Especially with the no more damaging himself buff. Um, yeah, just be a little bit careful about knocking Junkrats about. Like, honestly, I would have been perfectly fine with us using this to just pin the Reinhardt and kill the Reinhardt. It looks, feels like we sort of lose track of the Rhinot, we just say, sod it, let's get rid of the uh, rat, but just holding the Rhinot in the corner is perfectly fine. The thing with um, Primal Rage is Primal Rage is not an ultimate that, like, it's not a huge part of his kit, right? It, it's, it's a way you save your own life, and it's a way that you can keep people off the point, or you can disrupt an attack, but it's, like, anti-synergy with 90% of ultimates in the game. Like, you will knock people away from stuff that people are trying to do. You will knock people away from kills. So, in general, what I find works best as a team unit is just doing one thing with it and doing it in a very focused manner. Stuff like just keeping Reinhardt pinned in a corner and killing him means that the team knows that you aren't going to turn around and send the target that they're shooting at three miles. Like, that happens so often when a Winston is inexperienced where he'll try and do too much with Primal Rage and he'll jump all over the place, knocking people left, right, and center. But all he's doing is jumping over, punching them, they're flying away, and then they're being safe. And, like, anything that anyone's trying to do just doesn't happen. It's okay-ish when you're ahead and when you're winning, but if you're losing especially, be very careful with Primal Rage. As a tool, it is more to save your own life and keep yourself up and running. We should be backing up through our own barrier here. I mean, this I remember this fight. This entire fight is very, very silly. Um, but, yeah, just be very focused with it in terms of what you're doing. If you are using it for survival, jump. Uh, if jump is on a two-second cooldown. Jumping is a very good idea. The landing when you land from a jump does damage, so remember that as well. It's very important that you're getting that damage out. And then just try and knock people into corners or knock people away from important targets. Try and knock people into important targets as well, if you can. Um, stuff like a McCree Deadeye. If you knock them into it, the McCree will love you. We should be backing away from this fight. Mercy, like, I want you guys to watch this, actually, and I'm going to set it to slow-mo. Because it's worth mentioning. So here we go, 0.5. Just watch how little, f little, how few fucks, how few, few fucks this Soldier 76 is giving. He doesn't care. He, he... And then while we reload, most of the damage we've just done has just been healed back up. And now we're panicking about survival. Luckily we find a health pack. I didn't even know this health pack was over here, by the way. We we shouldn't be shooting the soldier. <laughs> it's it's one of those things that's like super obvious in hindsight. Um, but yeah. Like all that time, and remember that was half speed, but all that time the soldier just took no damage. We want to be hitting the mercy. Like, notice how low mercy is? We, we want to stay on this, so either we back off and we run the fuck away using this cooldown, which honestly wouldn't be a bad idea, or because our team is winning, we could be justified in committing and just going like through the barrier here and just staying on Mercy and basically trading Winston for Mercy. Uh, because the soldier will kill you afterwards. It's pretty much inevitable at this point that the soldier's going to kill you if you aren't running away, in which case you might be better off going this way, or you just go back to the large health pack in the sort of the atrium. Um... I didn't even know there was a health pack over here. Like, that's crazy to me. But the fact that we aren't shooting the Mercy, Mercy heals for about 50 a second, Winston does about 55 to 60 DPS. The, the math, sort of, the grim, the grim maths works out that Solid 76 just doesn't care. And Mercy even starts shooting at us to help finish this off. But on, in, like, on the bright side, the Soldier and Mercy took so long getting rid of us that they were not part of the fight, and our team just has won the point. So that sort of feels okay. 
bit of a panic bubble there. I, I kind of appreciate the thought that this might be coming for us, but um, not really worth it. It's a long cooldown, and yeah, okay, this is post patch, so the the barrier changes in, um, but it's still not worth like a. It's a relatively long cooldown that we kind of need. A little bit over aggro here on this jump. So I'm fine with us getting onto the point with our first jump to just try and help dislodge the diva a little bit and maybe, like, what would be nice is if we could get on the point and put this barrier down. And then that provides our team with a bit of cover to play with. Um, fortunately we don't have those resources, but this second jump, I would very much like to see us again. Landing here is fine, what isn't fine is this follow-up movement where we just walk in because then we see this, and this could just ruin our lives. You can anti-heal us, sleep us, Reinhardt charges us, we're dead. Instant, instant value for that team. This Reinhardt isn't really protecting anything right now. He can start swinging. He has free damage on us. He wins the DPS race because he has supports as well. It's it's not good for us to commit here. We could we are perfectly fine just staying in front of the Reinhardt and just like standing here and just zapping him down and just tickling him, tickling him, tickling him, making his life awkward and difficult. Um, and then if they start to commit something, we just pull around the corner again. It's similar to playing Roadhog. We want to be using line of sight. We want to be using corners. We want to be using the cover that the map provides us. Because if we don't, then we're just a big sitting duck target and stuff like this happens where we just get caught by the entire enemy team and we just die super, super quickly. Like we end up in a position where we're just surrounded and killed. Uh, Winston with no barrier and no cover. It's 500 hit points, and only 100 of that is armor. It's it's not tanky. Definitely put the barrier down. Good, 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 good. It's just sort of stopping Soldier doing good damage. They mess up the Nanovisor. I'm okay with us going on the Mercy here. Again, this is where in proper, like if we were playing super, super focused dive, um, we should be calling out Mercy. Like, there's one thing that drives me insane, which is when a Winston is playing dive and he isn't calling out what he's on. It annoys the shit out of me. And I'll do this right now while this team fight's happening because we're sort of getting clobbered now while their team is pushing in quite well and using a lot of ults to do it, but they're doing it okay. Uh, they used a lot of resources, but they managed to take the point. So I'll do this right now. Like, with three key pieces of dive comp, right? Usually you have like Winston, you have Tracer, you have Genji. Genji, relatively mobile, pretty quick moving, um, dashes about, good stuff. Tracer, really mobile, can change targets on a fucking dime, blinks all over the place, no problem, recalls out of trouble. Winston has a leap on a 6 second cooldown. Once Winston's leapt in and put his barrier down especially, he's pretty committed. So, in terms of priority... Uh, basically, the Winston cannot adjust as quickly as the Genji and the Tracer. That means once Winston has committed on a target, the Winston has relatively high priority. So, when Winston has committed on a target, it's important for the Winston to tell people what target he's committed to. Because if he isn't, then the Winston can just end up sort of off on his own, and he's not doing any real damage, because Tracer and Genji and whatever are off doing stuff elsewhere. So, the Winston should be telling people what's happening. Uh, someone does leave the match, but they do come back relatively quickly. Unsurprisingly, it's the Junkrat. Um, oh, it feels bad, man. But it's... To me, it's so important, it's so, so important for the Winston to call out whatever he's just leapt onto. And for Winston to be, when you're playing like full proper dive, the Winston should be very selective on how he jumps. And then calling out, I am on this target, and then Tracer can readjust, for example, very quickly. Genji can readjust very quickly. This ult, I'm not so keen on. I'm not sure what prompted this. We don't need this ult. I'm guessing it was a reaction to the hammer down, but I think the hammer down just went into your barrier anyway. But the one thing with using uh, Primal Rage is that you don't gain value in terms of like damage. Your DPS is actually lower in Primal Rage than it is in normal DPS form. And you, are, you have a lot of hit points, you are mobile, but you don't have any barrier, so your team loses any protection as well. So when you use Primal Ray, you're sort of committing to a new game mode, or a new hero you're effectively playing, where you're just punching shit around. And yeah, it's... It just doesn't seem worth doing at this point. Like, our team still needs protecting, our team's still fighting. We aren't helping anything, we aren't going to kill a D.Va in Primal Rage mode, so there's just no reason to use it. We're on full health, better to save it for when we actually need it. This is when we want to be calling out, hey, we're on the Ana. Ideally, we definitely want, don't want to be shooting a nano booster target with armor. Staying on the Mercy is A-OK, -okay, really good. 
We're low, so we want to be just trying to avoid damage. This Reinhardt's chasing us like crazy. We are getting healed. So what I'll be checking here... Okay, Lucio's just gone down. Then we want to get out. Uh, if our jump came off like a second or so earlier, I would say jump into the air and then hope that Lucio's healing does something for us, but... This is a complete wasted bomb. It's like a point they own, they don't need to use the bombs just yet. We're doing good damage. I, I like the use, the use of the pillar. I don't know why we've let go of left mouse button. We're reloading. Let's hold down left mouse button now. Like, we should be doing damage, there's no reason why not. Don't, we don't need to save our ammo, we don't need to save our shots. Let's get away from this D.Va, we don't, definitely don't want to be fighting her if she's getting healed and has armor. We won't win that fight. Oh, that's duking around, but let's try and find this Mercy. Try and keep, well, we're just staring at the D.Va, but we should be trying to figure out where Mercy is and how to get to the Mercy. Of course, problems for her. Staring at the D.Va, D.Va doesn't care about us. This is a lot better, where we're actually dealing meaningful damage now. We should have stayed on the Soldier, I don't know why we're not staying on that. The reason why it's pretty simple, this Soldier, like, we can't quite see his health bar. Maybe we get a peek at it as he comes lower. Um, but what we can do is we can actually isolate this target. Which will be quite nice. So what we should be doing at this moment, we saw that like when the soldier started, his jumpy was on about 100 hit points. At this point, he's probably looking, you know, he's now probably dipping under 100. If we move to position ourselves here so that we're aligned with this wall, even if Anna runs this way, she's basically just staring at a big fat Winston bum. Like this, this is Winston's big fat ass, and then this is his, his face. Those specs on here. His Sort of weird gorilla mouth. All right, this is Winston and his, his lightning gun, and he's zapping this way. And all Anna's doing is staring at our bomb. Right? And so she can't heal Soldier because she can't heal Soldier through us, and Soldier's going to die as a result. We could easily isolate this target and get rid of him. Again, just body blocking Anna. Works perfectly fine. Instead, we sort of just tuck in, and then Anna just goes and hunts down Soldier and then heals him up. We do get the Anna as a result, but hey, we could have got we could have killed Soldier and then killed Anna. Instead, we killed Anna and then Soldiers just run around and like gun down Junkrat and his ultimate in the process. Now we might actually want to consider using the ultimate and just knocking this Reinhardt away. So again, one of the uses of um, Primal Rage would just be to displace someone. This Reinhardt can't advance in quickly because he's just being shelled down by damage. We can just ult here and then just push these people off the point, maybe cap the point. Definitely stick on this Mercy, stick on her like glue, down she goes, no problem. Up on the Reinhardt. Let's keep an eye on the doorway though, just because, again, we aren't that effective on the Reinhardt. Now that he's put his barrier up, we want to sort of be going back to him, just because it makes him uncomfortable. And we like making Reinhardts uncomfortable. Okay, looks like we're taking it. And good. Primal Rage now pushing stuff off. Ah. Uh.